එදිනදා ඔබේ මුළු සිරුරටම රැකවරණයක් සුදේශී කොම්බ සබන් ලෙන්ගතිකම වැඩි කරගන්න ලාජු රුපියල් 50ට අඩු කළා මාමේ එන්න අපි තේ එකක් බොමු Tonight, positive signs. Curfew in Colombo and Gumpa to be relaxed from Tuesday, as Sri Lanka's COVID-19 recovery rate breaches 60%. Lapping up the plaudits, President Gotabaya Rajapaksha draws praise from the Indian Prime Minister over his clear thinking and tough decision making in the fight against COVID-19. East bombers did their reconnaissance of the Shangri-La Hotel two days before the attacks. In search of justice, the cardinal points to an invisible hand attempting to hinder Easter attack probes. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine this Saturday, the 23rd of May, 2020. Okay, hello, my name is Anu. Hatta, this is Mr. Rupiah Million. Tuna ka mool thein ke upa karna din aage na. Aur udde mukus ye time save kar gan. From Ada Derana. This is Other Than Our First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Tom McGee. Let's start with the local stories. Now, the government announced today that the two districts of Colombo and Gampaha, which had been under indefinite curfew, will join the other districts. From Tuesday next week, all the districts in the country will enjoy a window of free movement from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. Inter-district transportation is also allowed. However, people in Colombo and Gampa districts are not accorded that liberty. With the entire country being under curfew for the next two days, police urge people to respect the curfew. According to the latest communique issued by the President's Media Division, the curfew in all the districts of the country, including Colombo and Gampaha, will be lifted at 4 a.m. on Tuesday, the 26th of May. The lifted curfew will again be reimposed at 10 p.m. on the same day, and this pattern will continue until further notice. Furthermore, inter-district transportation will also be permitted in all districts, except for Colombo and Gampaha. However, the entire country will remain under curfew tomorrow and the day after, which are the 24th and the 25th of May. Meanwhile, the police took steps to send approximately 1,500 people to their respective homes who were stranded in Colombo following the onset of the curfew. They were convened at the Sugatadasa Indoor Sports Complex and then they were given transport to their relevant districts. In the meantime, the Beerwell Fisheries Harbour, which was closed due to the spread of COVID-19, resumed its retail trade after a 62-day break. As the Poson Full Moon Poe Day is to fall on the first week of next month, the Prime Minister's office has issued a set of guidelines on the conduct pertaining to Poson-related activities. Accordingly, steps should be taken to maintain social distancing by people who participate in religious programmes adhering to the safety protocols issued by the health authorities. Members of the public are requested to engage in religious observances in the same manner in which the Vesak festival was celebrated. In the meantime, nurses and other staff of the Gampa General Hospital staged a silent protest in front of the hospital today due to lack of transport facilities and slashing off their overtime allowances. The government's decision to relax the curfew comes at a time when the country's COVID-19 recovery rate breached 60% for the first time. 
40 coronavirus patients were released from hospital within the last 24-hour cycle, which ended at 10 this morning. What's more, Sri Lanka has now conducted over 500,000 PCR tests across the country, which have yielded just over 2% of positive cases. The number of COVID-19 recoveries reported in Sri Lanka rose by 40 within the last 24-hour cycle, taking the overall figure to 660. This sends the country's recovery rate past 60% for the first time, reaffirming that the decisions taken by the country in battling the virus have been nothing but successful. In the meantime, out of the 13 COVID-19 patients confirmed yesterday, 11 are naval personnel, while the remaining two are returnees from Kuwait and Malaysia undergoing quarantine. Meanwhile, 17 more infections were detected today, of which 15 have been identified as naval personnel and the remaining two to be returnees from Dubai. This takes the country's number of active cases to 416. So far, a total of 622 naval personnel have been infected with the coronavirus and 283 of them have recovered. Among them are 33 sailors who were discharged from hospital today. As the virus continues to spread among naval personnel at the Valisara Naval Base, a group of sailors were sent to the quarantine centres in Periacado and Pompeymado yesterday. In the meantime, the last batch of relatives of naval personnel who were undergoing quarantine at the Anuradhapura Navy Quarantine Centre were sent home today. Kese Vitat, Sosana Achara Dharma, At Sabandala Dovane Kirim and Saha, Samaja Durastabavi, Samasta Samaji Visin, Digin Digata Digin Digata Pilipadi Yutui, Mea Ulangane Kirima Sadha, Kisivak Vidripat Novi Yutui, Desha Palak Yaka Naikin, Pradeshivashin, Aitana Pradanin, Mesialla, Vena Deval to Edia, Mesialla Kiri, Avadani Umkaran Gila, Mampehadilivakino, Emanatang, Api, Navatat, Anduru Yugata, Yanata, Pulwa. Meanwhile, with PCR tests, continuously being conducted island-wide, the highest number of daily tests were performed yesterday with 1,970. It takes the overall number of PCR tests conducted in the island past the 500,000 mark. The number of patients that have been detected as a percentage from the total number of tests conducted is 2.13%. Meanwhile, the government is currently taking measures to systematically repatriate 41,000 Sri Lankans currently abroad, under which 260 students that were stranded in Russia were brought back to the island last night from Moscow. At the Bandarnak International Airport, the students were directed to quarantine centres after they were subjected to PCR tests and disinfection processes. According to Cabinet co-spokesperson Dr. Ramesh Pathirana, Sri Lankan workers from Qatar will be flown back to the country on the 26th of May, while the students in Belarus will be repatriated on the 28th. During the recent media briefing, he also said that other Sri Lankans in the Middle East and the Maldives will be brought back on priority basis. Now, President Gautabi Rajpaksha and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi have engaged in a 20-minute telephone conversation this morning. The Indian Premier has commended President Gautabe for being a clear thinker and a tough decision maker in tackling the threat of COVID-19 in Sri Lanka. The two leaders have also discussed pre-COVID-19 situation and where Sri Lanka and India are today with emphasis on enhancing bilateral cooperation. President Gautabe has commented on Sri Lanka's post-coronavirus economy while emphasizing on IT and technology. He has insisted on Sri Lanka's expectation of value-added investment from India. During the conversation, Prime Minister Modi had assured, uh, assured a roadshow in India for Sri Lanka once the current threat eases. Taking to Twitter, the Indian PM said that the two leaders agreed to accelerate Indian-assisted development projects in Sri Lanka and also strengthen investment links. Now, President Gautabi Rajpaksha says that a presidential task force will be appointed under the Defence Secretary to conduct a comprehensive survey of archaeological sites in the East and to take measures to preserve them. The President expressed these views during the second meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat last evening with the Buddhist Advisory Council, which is scheduled to meet on the third Friday every month. During the discussion, members of the Mahasangha enlightened the President on the necessity of a religious discourse due to misconduct of certain monks that will cause discredit to Buddhism and the Tripitaka. The President said that steps could be taken to rectify the situation during his tenure of office if corrective measures are proposed. <laughs> Salasum Karala, Idiriata, Kati to Kirimi, Avashitawe, 
මතුවී තිබෙන බව පෙන්වා දී යුතු වෙනවා භික්ෂුව ආධ්‍යාත්මික ගොවිතනක් මිස කුඹුරට බැහැලා ටැක්ටර් වල නැගලා බිම පෙරලලා ගිහියන්ගේ වැඩේ කරනවා නම් අපට පේනවා උතුම් බුද්ධ දර්ශනය තේරුම් නොගෙන හෝ වැරදි මතයක් හෝ ක්‍රියාත්මක වෙන බවක් The members of the clergy also pointed out that while the entire world appreciates the steps taken by the government to defeat the COVID-19 pandemic, the behavior of the opposition is disgusting. Meanwhile, attention also fell on the possibility of the coronavirus spreading in and around flats. කියන්නේ විස බීජ හරණය කරන ක්‍රමවේදයක් මොකක්වත් පාවිච්චි කරන්නේ නැහැ. ඒ නොසැලකිලිමත් භාවය නිසාම ඒ සුපිරි මහල් නිවාස සංකීර්ණයන් හරහා දෙවනි රැල්ලක් මතුවීමේ When members of the clergy raised questions pertaining to national security, the president pledged to follow through on his responsibilities on the matter to the utmost. Jatika Raksha wa Livanda wa mama nitara ma kriya karana wa mama e hinda tamai Araksha ke lekam vare aage hinda la siyeluma e haa sambandh tanaturu maata viswasa yoge ma hakiya vakti yana daksha pudgalayan මම පත් කළා තියෙන්නේ ඒ අයට මම නිසි උපදෙස් දීලා තිනවා සෑම විටම සාකච්ඡා කරනවා බුද්ධියාංශ ඉතාමත්ම වැදගත් මේ කාර්යයේදී ඒ අයට නිසි බලතල ලබා දීලා තිනවා හොඳ පුද්ගලයා මම පත් කළා තියෙනවා සෑම අංශයක් කෙරෙහිම අපි කටයුතු කරන්නට බලතලත් උපදෙසුත් ඒ අයට ලබා දීලා තියෙන අතර නිරතුරුවම මම මමත් ඒ පිළිබඳව ඒ අයත් සමග මේ කාර්ය හරියට සිද්ධ වෙනවාද කියන එක මම පරීක්ෂා කරනවා කුඩු සම්බන්ධයෙන් උත් පසුගිය කාලේ කොතරම් ඒවා අත්අඩංගුවට ගත්තද කියන එක නාවික හමුදාව සහ පොලීසිය අස්සින් ඒ පිළිබඳව විශාල ක්‍රියා මාර්ගයක් අරගෙන තිබෙනවා Now according to the Colombo Grand Mosque the Islamic community in Sri Lanka will celebrate Eid al-Fitr tomorrow as the new moon has been sighted today Thereby the Ramadan fast has come to an end and the Muslims in Sri Lanka will celebrate Eid al-Fitr festival on Sunday. Eid al-Fitr is a festival of breaking the fast and marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan. It is a religious holiday that is celebrated by Muslims all over the world and involves a range of celebrations as friends, family and the entire Muslim community comes together. We will see you shortly after this break. Stay tuned. कोरोना वायरस से पैतरीम वाला क्वान न सब अनुदान दे अच्छा होता है। Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday terror attacks of last year heard that ringleader Zaran Hashim and another bomber had engaged in reconnaissance of the Shangri-La Hotel two days before the attacks. It also heard that a room was booked by one of the bombers at the at the hotel on the 17th of April under a fake name. Chief Inspector of Police at the Criminal Investigation Department Mahinda Jayasundara who is in charge of the investigations pertaining to the Shangri-La hotel bombing on the Easter Sunday of last year gave evidence before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the attacks yesterday. He told the commission that an individual named Muhammad Hamshad had reserved the room 616 on the 6th floor of the Shangri-La Hotel on the 17th of April prior to the attacks. He added that Muhammad Hamshad is a fake name and the person who came to reserve the room was in fact the Cinnamon Grand Hotel suicide bomber Muhammad Ibrahim in Sav Ahmed. The chief inspector added that both Zahran Hashim and Muhammad Ibrahim Ilham who perpetrated the attack at the Shangri-La Hotel had visited the hotel 2 days prior to the attacks at around 7:30 a.m. He noted that it is possible that the duo had breakfast at the Table 1 restaurant in preparation of the attack. The witness went on to say CCTV footage shows that the duo had then spent several minutes at the hotel lobby before taking a taxi to a building named Lucky Plaza in Kolpiti. Zahran had rented a flat on the 5th floor of that building and investigations uncovered fingerprints of Zahran's daughter at the flat. Chief Inspector Jasundar also said that information pertaining to a van was uncovered when questioning the building's security guard. 
The witness said that an unidentified person had parked a white-colored van in the building's car park and when the security guard had inquired about it, the individual in question had driven away. Further investigations have revealed that the van in question is the same van which was subjected to a controlled explosion near the St. Anthony's Shrine in Kotikade a day after the attacks. The witness added that the next visit of Zaran Hashim and Mohammed Ibrahim Ilham to the Shangri-La Hotel by taxi was on the 20th of April at 7.56 p.m. The taxi they used had come from the Paratha Road in Panadura and the witness said that the duo had brought large travelling bags with them and it was later ascertained that the bags had explosives. The hotel's welcoming officer had told investigators that when a member of the hotel staff offered to take the bags to their room, the duo refused the service. Investigations have uncovered that Ibrahim Ilham had exited the hotel with a light travelling bag on the night of the April 20th and had taken a taxi to the Span Tower apartment complex in Mount Lavinia. It is also revealed that the suspects had rented two flats at the complex between the 12th and the 21st of April in 2019 and they were rented by the Kingsbury Hotel bomber. Chief Inspector Jayasundar added that after visiting the apartment complex in Mount Lavinia the night before the attack, Ibrahim Ilham had visited the house in Mahavila Gardens in Demotagoda. From Mahavila Gardens, Ilham had visited a renowned restaurant in Kolpiti and purchased food before returning to the Shangri-La Hotel at 1.46 a.m. on the 21st of April. The two suspects had taken the lift at 8.50 in the morning with two large travelling bags to go to the Table 1 restaurant on the hotel's third floor. After exiting the lift, the duo had shaken hands before Zaran Hashim went to the Table 1 restaurant and detonated the explosives at 8.54 a.m. The witness said CCTV footage shows that those who were in the vicinity had fled towards the lift on the second floor to save themselves. Chief Inspector of Police Mahinda Jayasundara told the commission that Ibrahim Ilham took the escalator to where the people who ran for their lives were and detonated the explosives at 8.55 a.m. Now, Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit says that there are powerful people trying to weaken investigations that are currently being conducted with regards to the Easter Sunday terror attacks of last year. He also said that the courts should not be made a mockery of and that it is the obligation of the courts to uncover culprits. Meanwhile, President's Counsel Ali Sabri is confident that an environment is created for independent investigations following the arrival of a new government. Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit called at the Sri Dharmapala Rama Temple in Mount Lavinia yesterday to check on Chief Prelate of the Amarapura sect, Most Venerable Kotagoda Dhammavasa Tera. Then Pasku Prahari, Vimarshan, Hodin Kirigan Yanaba Peno, Namut, Yam Yam Balaga to the Via, May Swaganim, Durura Karanat, Yam Yam Vedapiral, Sanguidane Karagan Yanaba, Tapita Ranchevela Tino, May Balaga to Shetra in Samahara, Aya, Egulu, Danavat Windapulu, Egulu Balavat Windapulu, Namut. Egulu dana gan do ni, taman ta jiwa tuimi aiti akti no agi, e miyegi e minis unta jiwa tuimi aiti akti buna. E aiti e udurala dala, mana wahi mi kam kia na label leka se hengila, meka ta veradi kau da kia la hoyan na ta behese na e ni ladari mahat perunta, tarjane e karan na ta, e ni ladari mahat perunwa adairi e ta pat karan da, oun ta virut do na du maga ta behela, niti at apakir ti e ta pat karan na ta, kadiu tu karan e ka veradi. मैं नीति क्षेत्र के लिए एको लांटे विशेष तत्व अग्नि हैं राते नीति है मोटे में पौधवी ये तो कोटे उसाविये हेल्प वट लक्करान उत्साह करने का वैरदी तमान नीति क्यों के लिए उसाविये टे आयुतु बाला पैम करान वैरदी कर पाए काउंट के लिए होया गया नहीं मत नीति युतु का मां एक टा आकुल हेली मट याम किसी के in the meantime, President's Council Ali Sabri also called on Chief Prelate of the Amarapura sect, Most Venerable Kotogoda Dhammavasatera, at the Dharmapala Rama Temple in Mount Lavinia this morning.
Now, Southeast Asian stock markets fell yesterday as Sino-US tensions were exacerbated after China said it would impose new national security legislation on Hong Kong following last year's pro-democracy unrest. Trade-sensitive Singapore shares fell 2.2% to hit its lowest level since the 6th of April and its index posted the third consecutive weekly loss. Thailand stocks closed 1.3% lower as energy stocks were weighed by a plunge in oil prices. The country extended its state of emergency over the coronavirus until the end of June to keep infections under control. Malaysian shares fell 1.1% after seven straight sessions of gains. Financial markets in Indonesia, meanwhile, were closed yesterday for a public holiday. Now, oil prices tumbled about 2% yesterday on rising U.S.-China tensions and doubts about how quickly fuel demand could recover from the coronavirus crisis. Fuel demand plummeted in recent months as the pandemic caused governments to impose restrictions on movement and businesses close to their doors. Oil has rallied in recent days as activities started to resume. But prices dropped after China said yesterday it would not publish an annual growth target for the first time. Beijing also uh, pledged more government spending as the pandemic kept hammering the economy. Brent crude futures fell 93 cents to $35.13 a barrel, and U.S. West Texas intermediate crude ended 67 cents lower at $33.25 a barrel. For the week, Brent and WTI gained 8% and 13% respectively, but some say they may have come too far too soon. Or too far too fast, in fact. Oil prices have plummeted more than 40% so far in 2020, and the recent rebound was due in part to the efforts by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and Allies to reduce supply. We will see you once more on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Now in football, Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez says that La Liga can resume buying closed doors from the 8th of June. The league's president, Javier Tabas, said that he had hoped Spain's top flight would restart on the 12th of June, although La Liga is yet to confirm a restart date. La Liga players started training this week in groups of no more than 10. Sanchez said that Spain has done what it should and now new horizons are opening for everyone and the time has come to bring back day-to-day -day activities. And that's it from all of us here at First at Night. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.